Okay, so making this video about uh, galvanized cable rail system. I don't know if you can see it on this deck. I've actually got two decks here. Um, I finished them so you can see the finished look um, first. If you like it, then you can watch the video. If not, don't watch it. Um, now, to begin with, uh, I did source out a couple of different uh, cable rail systems. And uh, one was from Feeney. Um, that included the uh, black posts that came with it and uh, it was approximately ten thousand dollars to do both these decks to code um, I did source out another one from Vista without the posts and just the hardware itself uh, was going to come to about five thousand dollars Canadian so I figured both were not reasonable options I decided to source out hardware from Richelieu hardware onward in Canada and uh, my total cost for all the hardware here um, for this job on both decks came to $440 Canadian. So it just meant doing a bit of work myself and both these cable rail systems for both the decks took me about um, five hours to do total. So here's the uh, finished product as you can see um, on both my cable rail systems for the decks. Uh, I've spaced them at nine and three quarter, which obviously is not to code. Um, so just want to point that out right away that um, if you want to be to code with four inch spacing, um, you're probably going to need eight cable rails, seven or eight cable rails on a 39 inch high post. Um, my posts, I did finish the bottom of the rail came to just over 39 inches, I think 39 and a quarter. So again, my spacing is nine and three quarter between each uh, rail. Um, now let's go over the uh, materials list here. Okay, so for the materials, and I'll just show you the, uh, the specs list on what I actually used. You can see it here on the sheet of paper. Um, first of all, the cable, galvanized cable spool from onward, you can see the serial number there. It's a galvanized cable, one eighth of an inch thick, seven by seven construction, that's a 500 foot uh, spool. Next I used um, oval sleeves. So that's your oval sleeve right there, and that's what you run the cable through. That oval sleeve is uh, five eighths in length and one eighth in diameter. Um, Next, you can see my turnbuckle. It's called a hook eye turnbuckle, and it's seven and five eighths um, inches uh, long by a quarter inch thick, and it carries an 88 pound uh, workload. If you wanted to step it up, um, these are all stainless steel. If you wanted to step it up to the zinc uh, coated ones, they carry a heavier workload, um, 100 and, 121 pound workload. Uh, is the next size up for this uh, particular hook eye turnbuckle. Um, next you have the uh, lag eye bolt and it's a four inch, it's a four inch lag with 175 pound workload, five sixteenths inches thick. So there again, there's your, your basic hardware. Um, it's real easy to assemble. I'm gonna go through that here shortly. The tools I used, real simple, here they are right there. Um, a couple of electrical screwdrivers that are rubber coat, I use those uh, to uh, crank the, the turnbuckle and the eye bolts to tighten them uh, and I use them because they wouldn't scratch, um, scratch the hardware. Uh, this particular, um, this is uh, your wire cutter or cable cutter and you can see the uh, serial number there. Um, also got this through Richelieu. Um, and it's, it's the one to do the job. I tried a couple other ones and they just shredded the cable. Uh, this one cuts through it like butter. It's, it's perfect. And it's worth the, the extra 50 bucks. A uh, pair of 30 inch uh, bolt cutters. You can get away with 24 inch bolt cutters. Probably work just as fine. I just happen to have the 30 inches. And of course your 20 volt drills. Uh, with One with the red Robbie on it and one with the quarter inch spade to, uh, to drill your, your jig. Okay, and there's the jig I used right here. Um, 
and, and what you use this jig for is you just line it up with the post. I'll show you here in a second. And uh, you pre-drill all your holes. What this does, it keeps all your holes at uh, the exact same spacing for each post. Enables you to get that cable. You can see the cable running through this post here. And it would line up perfectly with those eye bolts on the corner post. Okay. Okay, so now the... Uh, going to show you here on uh, the last post that I haven't uh, that I haven't finished up with the hardware uh, but how the jig works and you just basically line up this is a I'm not a carpenter or anything um, I'm not a deck building guy just a homeowner uh, but you line that jig up with the post and it's going to be three and a half inches wide the same as the post 39 and almost uh, well 39 and a light quarter up at the top you can see I've got nine and three quarter spacing and basically what I do is I just zip those screws in top and bottom to fasten the uh, the jig to the post and then I would pre-drill here here and here with my spade bit through the post um, what I would normally do is I'd go about three quarters in you can put tape on your spade bit um, so that you know how deep to go but I'd go about three quarters in and then uh, I would take the jig off and I'd finish the hole and I'll show you here in a second I finished drilling the hole just so the tip of the spade bit comes out the other side and then uh, finish it from the other side so that you get a nice clean uh, drill mark and you can see the uh, the drill holes here and the cable nice clean unobstructed uh, look that's what I was hoping for so that you're not um, looking at a bulky rail system while you're enjoying a, a drink on the deck. Okay. Okay, so I've got my uh, post jig here. I've lined it up with the post and it's tight to the top. Um, call it the header. And uh, I'm just going to zip in my screws, top and bottom. Now that you have your jig in, I've got my three holes that I want to drill. Now these are already pre-drilled, so I don't need to. Just drill through, get to about three quarters of the way through the post. Probably put some tape on your speed bed so that you know um, how far to go. You might want to drill to there, so you just put uh, painter's tape on that. So I've got my three drills, three holes pre-drilled already. What I would do is I would just take the uh, Jig off. Okay, and finish drilling those holes. Drop a bit. And then what I would do, and this is what I was talking about, is coming through to the other side. So I would just come through the other side, just till the the tip of the tip of the speed bit is poking through, probably to right about there, and then. Finish it from this side. Finish, finish the hole from this side. You get a nice clean look. You don't even really see the holes. Okay. Okay. So on a on a through post, it's not it's not a big deal um, with your uh, dr drilling your holes. Now with your corner post. It's a little bit different. Um, we've got these four inch um, eye, eye bolt uh, legs. And what you really want to do is you don't want to put them in um, further than halfway through the post for the reason that you have two eye bolts uh, meeting each other right in the center. So what I've done here on this post, you can see is that they're not quite all the way in. They're just really to the, um, to the end of the, the screw marks. And uh, I've done this for a reason so that both the tips of those lags meet at the center and don't press on each other. So for your corner posts, you may want to just consider doing that. Um, now I'm going to show you how to run the, uh, the cable with the old sleeves, eye bolts, and turnbuckles. Okay, um, so here's the hardware, the turnbuckles specifically. When you get them, you can see the threads are together. And what you want to do to start off with is 
separate those threads to give you lots of ability to uh, tension the cable, um, give yourself lots of play. So that's uh, one of the things that um, definitely you want to do. Um, tightening the, uh, the eye bolts is, I found the, the best method for it, was to just put a screwdriver through it and you can tighten it like that. Okay, goes really quick. Okay, so I've pre-cut the cables here and um, do yourself a favor, give yourself about six extra inches at each side to um, pull that cable tight. Um, it's a real pain in the butt to have to work with uh, only a little bit of cable. You need to get uh, channel pliers to pull it. This way you can just use your hands. Uh, and you can see I've got these bolts in. So these eye bolt legs are in um, exactly halfway or two inches and they meet in the center like I said. Then over here, the end post, you can see I've deliberately left uh, some of the uh, stem of the, um, the eye bolt, this part of the eye bolt um, out. And I did that so that if you do run out of thread on the turnbuckle, uh, for whatever reason, it's just, it's real easy to just take a screwdriver and crank that out eye bolt a couple of rotations to tighten it up. Um, that just kind of gives you um, uh, a safeguard uh, for keeping the cable tight and um, and I'm not sure if the cable will uh, loosen up, stretch uh, over time. I hope it doesn't, but if it does, then you can, you can use, certainly use that technique as well. Okay. Okay. So I ran my, I ran two cables already. They're real easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do it. And one thing to watch for is when you are tightening the cable, it doesn't hook the end of the, the eye bolt because then that'll create enough slack that'll probably screw up your turnbuckle. So just make sure it is on the, the end of the eye bolt. Okay, so this is the easy part. Real easy to do. Just take your, your cable and zip it through the uh, oval sleeve just like that. Then through your eye bolt. And back through the oval sleeve give yourself a little bit of play like so because you can always snip that off later and all you need to do now is just tighten it cinch it like that okay so I like to do three at a time and then I get out my bolt cutters and you really only see, I've seen some of these some guys crimp the oval sleeve twice you really only need to crimp it once try and line it up in a way that I can get those bolt cutters in there. Um, but really what you want to do is you want to get on the oval sleeve with the bolt cutters. Try and line it up as best you can. I'm almost dead center on that one. There we go. And then crimp it. Now, that one pulled a little bit so my loop is a little bit looser than I'd like. Um, but you'll hardly notice it. Okay, so that's the crimping. I'll crimp these other two as well. Okay. Not perfect, but it'll do. Okay, so you always want to start at the uh, the lag bolt end, not at the turnbuckle end. And what you do now is just uh, thread your cable wire through your middle post, back over here to this side, through the through the oval sleeve again. Okay, and then through your turnbuckle, the eye bolt of the turnbuckle, not the hook end. Okay, that just basically goes back through the oval sleeve. Give yourself some play. I'm on the top one here. So hook your, hook your turnbuckle on there, and then you can 
pull the cable tight so you don't have much play at all. Slide that oval sleeve across so it's tight. And then we can, uh, and we'll do that with the other two here. And then we'll crimp them and snip them. Okay. Go. Um, okay, so you can see I've got all three of them hooked on um, and still fairly, fairly tight. Um, I've got I've got to cinch my my oval sleeves now. This one first. One thing I didn't mention was um, I did a test with the oval sleeve with the galve cable through it with my uh, bolt cutters just to ensure that it wasn't wrecking it. So I made sure that I I got a full closed grip on the bolt cutters and it tightened the cable um, adequately. Okay. So, I've got all those tightened. Now it's time to uh, use your turnbuckle and figure out which way the turnbuckle is tightening it. So this way it's counterclockwise. I'm just holding the eye bolt so it doesn't spin with it at the same time. You can tighten it by hand to start. And then what I like to do is I like to finish the eye bolt with the, the snipped end down and away, but whatever preference you, uh, you like to have. I mean, you can finish the turnbuckle so it's standing up like that or sitting level. I kind of like it like that and what I do now is I get my two um, electrical rubberized screwdrivers and I put them in here to tighten it even further. Okay, so one just goes in there like that and the other one, what's nice about it is you can kind of press it in, it sticks and now you can crank it tight. It doesn't come out and it's not scratching the hardware. So that's pretty tight. Again, if you wanted to tighten it even more, I've still got some more play, some more play here with the threads and the turnbuckle, or I can use the lag bolt, um, the eye lag on the other side. Okay, I'm going to finish these other two, and then I'll show you the, uh, the stairs. Okay, so I'll get to the uh, stairs in just a second. I just wanted to show you the um, cutting the, the cable. So, really easy to do. You can see it here. Get underneath. I like to leave about an inch and a half. Um, it tends to sit nicely beneath the main cable and tuck in, and it's got a real clean cut. Watch this. So we can cut the other ones. And again, it's just kind of sitting underneath there. Super clean cut. These are the cable cutters I would definitely, um, definitely recommend. Okay, so this is the rail and that didn't take very long at all. I'd say about 15 minutes to get that, um, that section of the, the railing done. And then I'll probably just snip off these ends here, get them nice and flush, and then I'll show you the stairs. Go. Okay, good. All right, so for the, for the deck um, galvanized cable, what I did was, you measure your distance to the bottom of the top rail, which was just over 39. I have four spaces here, one, two, three, four, because I'm using three cables, obviously. So you just divide 30, you divide 39 by four. Now with the stairs, it's different because the stairs, I know I'm running at a 52 degree, 52 degree angle. Um, and so the cable should run in line with this outside stringer or uh, face board. Um, so what I did, what you need to do is you need to take a speed square 
and your measuring tape. Find your distance, but make sure you know your square when you're finding your distance. So I'm looking at it and I'm actually 25 and a half. So I ran the math already, 25 and a half divided by three because I'm only using two cables. It's eight and a half. So my spacing needs to be eight and a half, but at a 90 degree angle. So again, with the, with the stairs, once you have your mark that I know to be eight and a half, um, then you can put your, uh, what I did was I put my speed square up I uh, got my angle, which is 90 less 52, which is 38. So I got my angle of 38, and then I just lined it up with that pencil mark that I had. Created my line, and the only reason I have this line is so that when I drill with the spade bit up through there, I can drill at the exact 52 degree angle that I wanted. Okay? Okay, so you can see I've got um, one cable installed. Um, I, I showed you how to use the speed square and the tape measure. Alternatively, you could also use a string line um, or a straight board and run your angle, but you probably want to have more than one set of hands. Um, the, so now to get the next, next one, I know it's eight and a half. Again, running my speed square along that cable eight and a half inches and then I just slide it along until it intersects with that post which I know to be right there I marked a uh, pencil line there and then um, I squared it off and then once again I used my uh, my speed square to get the angle which was once again it was 90 less 52 degrees which is 38 degrees there that's how I got my my line so I've done the same thing down here uh, the reason being I um, in the as for to uh, <laughs> stop it Go. okay so I ran this angle on the 4x4 post and that's just purely to get my angle with and then I centered it at uh, inch and three quarter um, and this is purely just so I can drill for the lag at the same angle that the cable should be running okay and that should be good enough so I'm going to put my uh, eye bolts in there, run the cable just like I did before, and um, you can line them up any way you want. Once again, I like having the cut line on the bottom, almost facing away, and um, sometimes, uh, like if you're really picky, you might want to even line up the, uh, the turnbuckle, the hook end, away from the, the deck. Depends on you. Okay, I'll show you the finished product in just a bit. Okay, so all done the railing. This is the first deck. You can see that um, I did the same thing as far as, as far as running the angle on the post. Try to finish all my turnbuckles with um, lots of play to adjust for tension uh, in the future. Again, clean cut lines with those snips I was using on your. Uh, on your oval sleeves one crimp is usually fine um, so here yeah you can see the the look of it again it's not the code but I was looking for a minimalist uh, type look from uh, from the deck out and uh, so sitting from one of the Muskoka chairs this is kind of the view you have um, very unobstructed so again, just um, plan for your turnbuckles. I tried to keep them out of the way. I used that off the corner of the house. Another one off this corner of the house. Um, then in that corner and that corner, I spaced them out quite a bit. So you're not seeing a whole bunch of them in the same uh, 
in the same section of uh, rail. Okay, so, and you can see this gives you a good idea looking at the uh, the pilot holes that were drilled using the uh, the jig that they all line up um, perfectly um, and I like the look of the cable running through the post as opposed to using fasteners on each side of the post I've seen some systems uh, doing that as well so um, going over here to the other deck same sort of thing um, you can see I finished the uh, um, the uh, cable rail along the, the staircase. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, and uh, there's your finished product for the rest of the for the rest of the deck. Okay, so again, everything's stainless steel um, fasteners along with the galvanized uh, wire. Um, last thing I just wanted to point out to you is I've got the um, the codes are right there. Um, if you do choose to use the exact same system that I used, again, I think it's more than adequate. Um, it's not to code, so again, there's no four inch spacing, but uh, it's nice and sturdy. Nice and sturdy when you're pushing on it, and uh, I like the look of it. Okay, um, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm not a carpenter, so uh, if I did do something that's not correct, please let me know, and uh, I'll make sure that I correct it for the future. Thanks.